So this guy. So here I am with an unfinished project and a couple of miniatures that I thought looked really cool, but I don't really have an excuse to actually paint. So I decided two birds, one stone. I am going to make a the big red thing, uh, a big platform, a vehicle for a war band of Wendigo cultists. Okay, so here's the kind of plan right now is to make this thing uh, just like a big moving vehicle that the Wendigo like steers around and uh, they'll find humans like this. They'll, uh, they'll jam them in here where there's a bunch of like buzz saws and shit. And then it, uh, it spews out back on top of here into this little pile. And um, that's just a bunch of human flesh that the Wendigos could feast on. So it's pretty late right now. But um, I just thought of uh, what I want to call the, the big machine. So it like chops up people and turns them into like mulch for the Wendigos to eat. So why not call it the Gore Grinder? Not only a sick name for a band, a sick name for a giant, uh, giant slaughterhouse. Right, I'm still working on it in the morning. It's a new day. And I think I might honestly have a plan for what I want to do with this thing. So a while back, uh, my buddy Duncan, he made he made these. He was planning on turning them into like a railroad, I guess, but um, he never got around to it. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is use it as like sort of scaffolding for the main platform that will go right right here. But uh, I'm gonna need to make some more scaffolding, which I'm not looking forward to since I hate working with popsicle sticks. Wish me luck. This is where I'm at with the uh, the wood platforms. I decided not to use the ones that uh, my buddy made. Instead, just made a bunch of them on my own because I wanted them to be a little bit more raggedy than the ones that were made. And uh, I just started the process of like, of just chipping away at the wood to make it look a little bit more weathered, like actual wood planks. Um, this is what I hate about wood stuff, about using popsicle sticks because every single time, without fail, I get several splinters. I think I'm on splinter three right now. I did it. I finished almost all of the wood sections. Beautiful. So this piece of plastic is from my actual phone at the time. I live a very self-destructive lifestyle. Dishwasher detergent caps have got to be my favorite cap for kit bashing and scratch building. I, I got to use one at least in every single build I do. I hate using hot glue for scratch building because it's super brittle and will come off super easy. Uh, for larger connections like this, it's not super practical to use any other kind of glue. So the thing that I'm kind of working on now is this, this little conveyor belt thing that I've got going on, this little contraption, because I'm thinking maybe somebody's going to be up here in the crow's nest. that I can then roll into an appropriately shaped Okay, so it's been a few days and I've made a little bit of changes, but it has been slow going. Uh, the first thing I did is I moved this thing up here. Um, the next thing I changed was these. I had these chains because I didn't think it looked super stable to hold this stuff up. And obviously the ladders I finished on both sides. So I just added like this, this little wood layer down here. And what I'm planning on doing with that is I'm gonna just gonna have like a buildup of chunks of like flesh mulch in here as like 
Okay, so if the Wendigo, they throw their bodies in here, it goes down, chunks up, it'll then come out into here and just kind of pile up. So uh, I think that's where I'm gonna go next. I think I'm gonna have to make a texture tool for like little faces or something. It hurts me on a visceral level to destroy the camera I'm destroying to this extent. So I think I got a little bit carried away last night. For those of you who don't know what greebling is, it's adding like just little details using random bits and pieces you have. So not like structural support or any of the main stuff like this. Such as uh, all the, all these little gears and screws and stuff. This little microphone. But, um, I mean, it, it hasn't been too insane of a greebling process. I added this little tire. I added these things right here in front of this. Use super glue lids to kind of cover up these corners. First person to complain that I'm destroying bionicle parts. It's a swift kick to their Zamor spheres. All right, now for the best part of the build. So I have this compulsion that uh, makes me want to like extra kit bash every figure, make sure every miniature I make is like unrecognizable from its original form. But uh, with this, this one, this set specifically, uh, I kind of made it with the intention of like, I don't know, just a little bit, so, just something simpler, you know what I mean? Let's get kit bashing. So I was gonna go for the uh, basic like stag antlers look, like follow real patterns of stag antlers, but I realized Wendigos are sp aren't really supposed to look like that. They're supposed to be just kind of fucked up, like and just have like fucked up faces and stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is less antlers and more just like random bone protrudences. I may not be overly fond of Games Workshop, but damn are their orc jawbones pretty nice for kit bashing.
more than the other ones, this guy is desperate for some green stuff. This mini was a dollar fifty. I feel so lucky that I'm able to just like buy as many of these things as I want, because it's such a nice sculpt. I want I want to do more with it. I was definitely going for more of a stag, like modern Wendigo sort of look with this one, with the whole deer skull thing. Thanks for the mini, Carly. Clearly it's going to good use. I just thought it would be funny if the medic of the group was the Wendigo equivalent of a hot dog seller at a baseball game, just handing out chunks of meat. This whole creation was just me wanting to make a version of Chum Bucket from the Mad Max video game. Now that I've shown you how to make your uh, disgusting little human food platter, uh, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more goop and human bloody guts to the actual gore grinder itself before I reprime it. So for this part, I'm not actually using uh, green stuff. I'm using milliput, which is a different kind of two-part epoxy. I like to use this stuff for more like fleshy and natural-looking. Uh, textures as opposed to the more detail-oriented work that I like to do with green stuff. Millipod is a lot more temperamental and because of that it usually flows better, which works better for organic stuff. So here they are, all primed. Um, I think they look amazing as is. I am so happy with how they came out. There was a little bit of a problem with the primer. Um, I think I sprayed it at, right after it rained. So, there was some moisture locked in there, which was kind of a pain, but I went over it with another coat, and I think it looks pretty good right now. The one last thing I need to really worry about is the color scheme. I am not super sure of what I want to do. Although, right now, I think what I want to go for is, like, purple primary colors. So, for, like, jackets and stuff, with almost greenish brown highlights and secondary colors. And then I'll just have like a kind of a fleshy green as like the skin tones for like this, this, and yeah, the, the greenish browns for that. So a very like purple and green color scheme, which uh, I also think would work really well for um, the gore grinder back here, which I want to give a purely green color scheme, but a much darker green because I don't know, I was thinking about what colors to do this, and the first thing that came to my mind was classic comic book villains, like Jack Kirby style Spider-Man characters. They're all green with purple, and I think that's a naturally villainous color. I want the gore grinder to kind of look like a tractor, so green makes sense. So there we go. I think I might make a purple. Painting was relatively uninteresting, except for painting these stripes, which were a pain in my ass. I think it's done. And I, I'm honestly, I'm really happy about the way this looks. Look, check this out. Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. Glamour shots in a second, by the way. But there's one thing I said I wanted to do that I didn't end up doing. And it's, um, I wanted to make it like it was a meat processing plant, like a slaughterhouse at some point, uh, before the Wendigos, like, took over it. And I really don't have, like, there's no flat surfaces to write, like, um, the name of a meat processing company on it. If that doesn't make any sense. I, I think what I'm gonna do is, see this little part where you can hang the noose, the noose hangs off of this thing right here? The camera wants to focus. Yeah? 
Eh, it'll get it eventually. Uh, I was thinking about hanging, like, a little, little sign that says, like, I don't know, um, Gerard and Sons or something. The sign is on and is looking beautiful. I'm not a, not a master baser by any means, so I'm just doing a, uh, a quick, quick custard, crustard job. If you don't know what crustard is, I'm not going to show you how to make it. Super simple, super easy. Uh, just look up how to make crustard, I'm sure you'll find something. Or to link you to Bill Making Stuff's channel. Honestly, he may have invented it, I just don't know. It's done! I'm so happy with this. I love that it's done. I've done nothing but this in my free time for weeks. You don't understand. This was edited down a lot. There's so much footage of me just futzing with different paint schemes or trying different soap bottles to fit onto this thing. And it's finally done. And guess what? I don't have any room for it. There's no room on my shelf. I, I just, I just don't know where I'm going to put this. Like, I don't, I don't really have a ton more room to put shells. And I don't really want to sacrifice any of my, uh, my builds. I just, I just don't know where I'm going to put it.